I did have a plan six years ago. Um, I was doing well. I was working full time as a mental health professional. And I, I went through a lot. I was going through a lot in my life. I had to leave my job. I lost my apartment. And I was going to end up homeless once again. And the thought of suicide was very prevalent. I was sitting in my apartment and I had no, no electricity, no heat. I had no food except oatmeal. And uh, the next morning I was going to go into a shelter um, and I didn't want to. I didn't feel like I had the strength to do it again. And in the past, my suicidal thoughts came via lack of hope hope for the future, that things will get better. And I really felt that that night, but I also felt tired. I was just, I think anyone with a chronic illness can relate that day after day, it gets tiring and um, you need a break. So when I was about to go into the shelter, actually the suicidal ideation, the thoughts of suicide turned into a plan. And I knew when the sun rose, I was going to go and, and attempt, you know, um, try the action again. Um, hi, my name is Kev. I am, this year I'm turning 50 years old, and I am a suicide survivor. And I'd like to tell you my story today. My mental health struggles began when I was young. I started experiencing symptoms around age 10. Um, in my household, I had been experiencing um, a complicated household. Um, and in my 10th year, I experienced two, two incidences of sexual abuse from strangers. Um, I began seeing and hearing things that weren't there and falling into a deep depression. Quickly started using drugs and alcohol as well. Um, by the time I was 13, I advocated for myself to my parents and my counselors saying that I needed help. And I went into a psychiatric hospital. From ages 13 to 15, I bounced around from psychiatric hospitals to group homes. Um, when I was 16, I moved back home, and I was doing pretty well. I was staying away from drugs and alcohol and um, going to some therapy. Um, but my symptoms were still alive and uh, prevalent in my life. And I went, I was home for 11 months, and I went out and started drinking and doing drugs again and decided to take my life. Um, I was 16 at the time, about to turn 17, and I had no hope for my future. Um, my, my daily life was filled with um, depression, fear, um, hallucinations, visual and auditory and somatic. And um, I was in a very dark place. Even though I had gone through psychiatric hospitals, my diagnosis was just major depression uh, because I kept many of my symptoms to myself, such as um, my schizophrenia. Um, so about a year after being home from the hospital, I. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep up with daily life of just existing um, with all my symptoms always on high alert. Um, so I went out drinking one night and um, I came home and had the plan that I was just going to end my life. Um, at home, drunk alone, I went through the medicine cabinets and... Um, just found every pill that I could take, my, my father's medications for his heart, and, uh, my med mental health medications and aspirin, anything I could take. And um, 
just sat in front of the TV and took them all. Um, and I realized I felt like I was dying. Um, I could feel myself kind of flipping away and I got scared. Um, and I blacked out. And what I had done was I had gone to the phone and dialed 911. And um, police and ambulances came. I, I don't remember much after that. Um, but my sister had come home that night and found me on the front lawn, a mess with paramedics and everything. Um, and I was in a coma for five days in the children's hospital. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't expected to have, I was expected to have nervous system damage and, um, and miraculously after five days, um, I remember waking up and pulling all the tubes out of my face and my family was there. Um, And when I woke up, I felt relieved that I felt the relief of the need to use drugs and alcohol. Um, I didn't feel like, I felt like I had learned that was not working for me. And when I woke up, I felt like I no longer needed to do that. Um, and from that day, um, I never touched a drug or alcohol um, for the next 15 to 20 years. Um, Prior to um, attempting suicide, I had thought about suicide on a daily basis. And um, after the suicide, I still thought about suicide a lot. Um, I went through another round of hospitalizations. And, um, and then I came back home and life didn't get any better. Um, my father passed away. My schizophrenia symptoms got really bad, and I ended up getting kicked out of my house and put into foster care. And then from there, homeless. Uh, I, when I turned 18, I started my career in homelessness. And, um, and I've been homeless many times throughout my life. And the, the thought of suicide is, is still there frequently for me, but... Ever since that day when I attempted it, it really hasn't been an option. It's, it's been something I think about, like, if I'm angry and I think about punching a wall, but I don't do it. And if something is really happening to me traumatically, I'm having a really bad day, I think about suicide. Um, but I know that it, for me, I see it now as a temporary solution, uh, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Um, that isn't to say I haven't had plans to do it, um, throughout my life. Um, as I said, throughout my life, I, uh, I've been homeless many times and I wasn't properly diagnosed till age 35 with, uh, schizoaffective disorder, CPTSD and ADD. Um, but I never attempted it. Um, I did come up. I did have a plan six years ago. Um, I was doing well. I was working full time as a mental health professional, and I I went through a lot. I was going through a lot in my life. I had to leave my job. I lost my apartment, and I was going to end up homeless once again. And the thought of suicide was very prevalent. I was sitting in my apartment, and I had no no electricity, no heat. I had no food except oatmeal. And uh, the next morning I was going to go into a shelter um, and I didn't want to. I didn't feel like I had the strength to do it again. And in the past, my suicidal thoughts came via lack of hope, hope for the future, that things would get better. And I really felt that that night, but I also felt tired. I was just, I think anyone with a chronic illness can relate that day after day, it gets tiring and um, you need a break. 
so when I was about to go into the shelter, actually the suicidal ideation, the thoughts of suicide turned into a plan. And I knew when the sun rose, I was going to go and, and attempt, you know, um, try the action again. And um, due to my mental health training and education, I, I saw the red flags. I knew that I was sitting there that night making plans to kill myself again. I knew I had been here many times before, and I may be here again someday thinking about suicide and ending it all. And I said, I need to do something. Um, so I started going through all the coping skills that I learned, and nothing was working. One of my major symptoms during hard times is called anhedonia which is the inability to f feel fulfillment and joy from activities. So I was doing these activities to bring myself out of this um, suicidal thoughts, and none of it was working. So I decided to write a song, and I spent my night writing a song um, about how I was feeling and how I had been here many times before. And I may be here again someday. Um, mental illnesses can be a chaotic life. Uh, so I wrote this song for, um, for the next time that I'm sitting here and contemplating it. Um, I can play that song and kind of feel better. Um, these days, I'm turning 50. Um, I've been in recovery from mental illness for 15 years. And it's been a rocky road. I've been in and out of hospitals, shelters, and uh, I'm technically still in temporary housing. Um, but I spend a lot of my time working towards my own recovery in everything that I do. Uh, my art and my music, I focus it towards helping others who are struggling. Um, I spend my time performing at shelters and psych units and telling my story of recovery. Um, and the more that I do that, the more it gives me reason to continue staying here. Um, another type of suicide that um, I didn't talk about, when I was 40, I had my first heart attack. Um, and my father had passed away from heart conditions uh, at 55. So I had my first heart attack and I was going through a, a deep depression. And so I, I started a passive form of suicide in that um, I stopped taking care of myself. I started smoking more, eating really unhealthy, bringing my cholesterol up, hoping that I would pass away and it wouldn't be my fault. You know, it wouldn't be technically suicide. Um, a lot of my moods come in waves and they always pass. So as that mood passed I, and through therapy, I was able to work through that and realize what I was doing. I didn't really realize I was doing it at first. Um, so these days, you know, I spend my time working with others um, in their recovery as a peer specialist, as a musician. And doing that work makes me look forward to my, my own future. Um, much of my life has been spent in survival mode, either in depression, looking at my past, or trying to survive in the day and just living in the moment. And I never think about my future. When I was a teen, I didn't think I'd make it to 20. Then I didn't think I'd make it to 30 and 40. Now I'm turning 50. And it's the first time in my life where I'm starting to make goals for the future. and who I want to be. Um, in many ways, I feel like a teenager, just starting to um, make my goals for life and learning the lessons in life that I many learned when they were teenagers. So my ideation these days is not as strong. Like I said, it's like when I'm angry and I want to punch something, I think about it, but I don't do it. I still think about um, suicide in that way. Uh, my mental illness is a daily battle where I wake up triggered and symptomatic and I have to dig myself out of a hole each day 
before my first meeting <laughs> and get ready for the day, you know. So I wake up three hours early and do my coping skills and take my meds and do my routine. And in doing so, I'm working towards, you know, having some something of a future. And it takes the ideation away a lot. Art and music played a big role in not only my recovery, but prior to um, diagnosis in survival and coping. When I was a kid, um, I always loved to draw, and I was I got noticed at school for my drawing, and um, people kind of thought that I would grow up to be an art teacher or something. Um, and when I went to um, what well, what art did for me as a kid is it helped me express symptoms that I couldn't through words. Um, when someone's sick, you can take their temperature, um, but you can't measure sad, you know. Um, so I would draw pictures to try to communicate to adults what I was feeling, even though I didn't know why I was feeling it. Um, music came into my life. When I was a teenager, uh, my brother played guitar. And when I went into my first hospital, he would come up and teach me how to play songs. And one of the weekend counselors would bring in a guitar and um, teach me different songs and kind of educate me in music. And I started writing songs. And that also became a way of expressing how I was feeling and I was doing it with words and usually through metaphors and, and stories about other people, but I was expressing myself. Um, and when I was, when I was about 14, I started performing around, uh, Boston and New England. Um, during, during my teens and twenties, when I was homeless, um, I would play in the subways, um, in, in the different town centers and make money that way. Um, in my recovery, I used my music to, for the same reason, um, to help me express the trauma that I've been through and the symptoms that I have felt and currently feel. Um, I, I have a song that I wrote about, about, um, waking up in the morning filled with my psychotic symptoms and my depression symptoms and how I work through that. And, um, I wrote many songs just working through my early childhood trauma and, um, in performing them, I'm vocalizing what I went through over and over again. So the first time I play a song that's a difficult thing to, to for me to talk about, it's very difficult to play it. But a year later, I'm playing the song and I'm expressing these feelings and it's a lot easier to do so helps me process the information better. Um, so these days I write a lot about my symptoms and recovery and I, I like to do a lot of art. Um, and, um, I limit myself. I find that as someone who with bipolar, um, if I dive too much into my art or my music, I will, my mood will tend to go manic and I won't sleep for days and I'll just do art and music. So when I'm doing drawings and something, I will limit my time to um, two hours on this and one hour on this and take breaks. Um, the greatest joy has been people who hear my music and can relate and um, it might bring a tear to their eye or give them some sort of feeling that they're not alone in their symptoms or in the life that they had to live um, because of their illness. Um, I want to talk about a bit about my diagnosis. Um, as I said, I have schizoaffective, which is a combination of bipolar one and schizophrenia, where schizophrenia is the more prevalent of the two. I also have what's called CPTSD, complex PTSD, which generally people have um, when they've gone through childhood trauma. A lot of my childhood trauma is still in um, eludes my memory and comes in flashes. Um, but as, as a child is going through trauma over and over again, the 
brain develops in a different way. And so now when I'm 50, I'm kind of relearning the lessons that many of us learned um, in our teens and 20s. I feel like a college student. <laughs> um, and then I have inattentive ADD, um, which I've learned to cope with. Um, I take medications every day. My It took me good five to seven years of trying different medications after my diagnosis to find what worked best for me. And since then, um, I've been on these medications for about 10 years, and they have decreased over time as I have developed coping skills and a healthy lifestyle. I've been able to take less and less medications. Um, these days, I only take one mental health medication. Um, and I seem to be, um, through my coping skills and education and self-awareness, I'm able to keep myself um, better than, I like to say, better than stabilized. Um, many, many people who um, live with mental illness, um, they use the medications and reach stabilization. Um, and then that's, that's where we stay. And um, there is recovery beyond stabilization um, where you can lead a very happy and productive life. Um, and that's kind of what I try to show with my life is that, um, through learning, self-educating, um, insight, practicing insight, practicing coping skills, you can achieve something beyond stabilization and, um, shoot for dreams. You know, I'm here shooting for dreams every day. Um, my life now is filled with lots of different activities. Um, that all support my mental health. Um, I have a hard time with social anxiety, um, so I run Dungeons and Dragons games at the local cafe. Um, that gets me out in front of people and talking, and I perform on stage. Um, I have hard times in the mornings, so I wake up, and the first thing I do is I go down to the beach and have my coffee, because it's hard to have a hard time when you're sitting on a beach drinking coffee in the morning, you know? So I do all these things to combat against my mental illness. And it's given me a, a life that, for the first time in my life, I'm looking forward to down the road um, to see what's coming. So thanks so much for watching. And um, yeah, it's, it's a real pleasure to share my story with you. Thank you. So the night before I was going into the shelter this last time, um, the songs that normally would help help me um, weren't. And so I wrote this song the next time um, I'm in this situation again where I want to take my own life. I can play this song and it, it gives me a better perspective and it's called Before. Might be tired, but I've been tired before. It's not my first time. I made my way back from the floor. And the harder I fall. Forget what I'm fighting for and I might be down But I've been down before It's gonna be a fight 
been a fighter before It's not my first time in battle But now I am at war Where I get beaten down Battered and sore I can be a fighter I could have before And it might be dark But I found my way I can see no light My feet recognize this floor Where it's weathered and warm Is the path that I look for And it's a damn hard time But I was hardened before I might be down But I've been down before It's not my first time in battle But now I am at war And the harder I climb more I'm fighting for and I might be down But I will climb until I soar Yeah, I might be tired But I will climb until I soar And I will climb until I soar